I want to start with this assassination attempt. Sunday, when this goes down, initially I was like, there's no way. There's no, there's no way that, that there's two, right? I kept thinking there, there, there's some kind of rhetoric. And then I started looking at the media. And at first I was like this, like I couldn't figure out what was going on. It was like there's two worlds, one in which there was actually an assassination attempt. And then the commentary that started to evolve was like, okay, but he kind of is to blame for this. And, you know, it really isn't that big of a, it's, I, I just, I don't know. I kind of had this feeling that if you try to assassinate the leading candidate for president, it would be wall to wall breaking news. Um, we would be looking into all this, but it's sort of like every aspect of this, the shooter's really not a Democrat because he, you know, in sixth grade when he ran for middle school treasurer, he was kind of a Republican and like, they're doing everything to whitewash this incident. And you have all of this media background. Like I, I should I be shocked or surprised or no? No, I mean, I, it, this is what they do. Okay. I, I mean, it's, it's shocking. It's surprising just because you're a normal person <laughs> and you kind of keep going in glass half full, expecting the best of these people. But, you know, you're so disillusioned as am I time and time and time again, because they have their narrative, they have their agenda, Sean, and they're going to continue to try and solve for that. Therefore, when things come, you know, into their realm that don't fit the narrative, then they're going to push it away however they can. In this case, they cannot go after Donald Trump on policy, right? His policy is kick you know what like it's great policy i mean he just came out with no tax on overtime because he wants to incentivize work imagine that instead of handouts we're going to incentivize work and say no taxes no income taxes federal income taxes on overtime i love it so we're talking ideas here and policies that by the way are proven to work just look at his economy versus hers and so what do they do they go back to the well they go to these personal attacks you had hillary clinton on Rachel Maddow's show, she does like once a week there on MSNBC, doubling down on how bad he is and how she just can't understand how journalists can't totally come to that realization. On top of which, Sean, she then floated this idea that somehow if you promote misinformation, therefore propaganda, then you might be in, in serious legal trouble, possibly even criminal trouble for that. I'm like, great, so we're all going to jail because we have an opinion that doesn't right. mesh completely with Hillary Clinton's. I mean, this is actually a really dangerous spot that we are in as a nation. When you are no longer talking policy and you're just going personal attack, personal attack, personal attack, one after another, the guy gets shot at now twice and you're still going to double down on, well, he's bad. Well, they, they, the funny thing is I give the Trump team credit for this. They put out, you know, the kids like to say they brought the receipts, three pages yes. of Kamala Harris saying he's a threat to democracy. He needs to be eliminated. Now, I don't know. I, I just sort of, I've had this conversation with a couple of friends where I've said, you know, if someone tells you that there's a threat, your instinct is, okay, it needs to be eliminated. Like if there's a fire, you need to put it out. If there is a door open, you need to close it. So when someone tells you consistently that there's a threat, what do you think is going to happen? Some nut job. And again, they're, oh, this guy's a nut job. Of course he's a nut job. Yeah. But the bottom line is he's inspired by you. When you tell everyone over and over again, and it's on, this is what he tweeted out. He used, he parodied her language that he's a threat to democracy. And if someone tells you there's a threat to democracy, to your way of life, I don't see how anyone's surprised that at some point somebody acted. So it's funny. He's responsible for every person that went into the Capitol on January 6th, right? So his rhetoric, according to Democrats, is responsible for that. But then why are they responsible for someone acting on a threat to democracy? Yeah, because they're a bunch of you know, stubborn children that are used to getting their own way, Sean. I mean, look, you've been in Republican politics your whole career. I've been on the media side and on the finance side my whole career. We know how this is played. They're used to getting their way. I mean, think about how they attacked Romney, okay? I know Romney's not exactly, you know, most favorite person, but think about how they went after him over and over and over again. He just didn't have enough whatever to go back at them full on. Donald Trump, did they've done this to every candidate look at how they were trying to paint nikki haley who by the way is is half indian 
as a racist. They were doing the same with Ron DeSantis. When they thought that those people were in the running, they went after them tooth and nail with everything they had. This is their MO and they're used to winning because listen, when someone calls you those heinous names, that's like a hard thing to, to push back on, right? Oh, I agree. Then that, now I, I, suddenly yeah. you're on your heels saying, well, no, I'm not. But the fact that you're saying, no, I'm not, means that, well, maybe you are. So they know that that system of attack wins and works and it's worked for them for the last however many decades and now all of a sudden it's not that's why he's a threat he's not a threat to the country he's a threat to them for goodness sake. that's see that's the thing that's the thing these guys these journalists and this is what people ask me all the time like they're, they're just pissed they don't like him personally he doesn't kiss their butt and that's the thing is that they're used to being exalted i mean most of these kids i'm sorry like i'm not condoning this but probably got shoved in lockers as kids and were outcasts <laughs> and this is like their way of well it's true i mean meet most of them they have like no personalities they they suddenly get because they can actually write a story they they get attention you won't be able to do that much more i'm what? telling you just check, check out chat gpt they're actually gonna have to have some personality oh, I, yeah, listen, to talk about the story that's i, I mean I'm, <laughs> I'm so digressing right now but ag salzburg the the publisher of the new york times wrote this big op-ed the other day i finally got around to reading it over the weekend and he was just like oh my god the media is under attack and all this stuff and i'm like i, I hate to tell you this but you suck like <laughs> when you do a bad when you write bad copy and you your industry sucks what do you I mean? It's like, can you imagine, like, think about this for a second. Take out the media and put in restaurant and just say, I mean, I know you're a financial person, right? So you look yeah. at stocks and you say, okay, their, their profits didn't do well. And that's why they, but can you imagine like a, an owner of a restaurant being like, you know, our industry's under attack because not enough people are coming to eat our crappy food. And it's like, well, at some point you have to take responsibility for the product. And the New York Times is basically saying, we put out a crappy product, we insult a lot of people, but somehow it's Donald Trump's fault and everyone on the right that we're not succeeding. Yeah, well, they're, they're jealous. They're jealous of like what we're doing right here, right now. Well, that's, okay. and they are, no, no, they're, they're not je jealous. Because guess what? They're, Nobody they're needs scared. to go to the New York Times anymore. They're scared though. I think that's the problem is that they, they're like, I don't know that I can make it on my own. I don't know what I would do. I, would, I had this talk that I gave um, at, a, at a journalism school probably three, four months ago now. And, 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 and they kind of said, well, journalism is under attack. And I said, no, 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 no. It's alive and well. It's actually more robust than ever before. Legacy media is under attack because it sucks and no one wants to buy it. But look at Substack. Look at these former reporters who actually do their job and the amount of money they're making independently by asking people, hey, you like my work, subscribe mm -hmm. to it, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is the New York Times like, but but we have a union and we need to pay the union and we need, and so- It's like felt in the hand, I'm sorry. You know, and the New York Times in particular, again, like maybe I'm naive, you know, I look at this kind of like you were looking at it over the weekend as you get this news in. I saw some Google alert on me, they're, they're attacking me again for, for who knows what. And it's like, wow. And by the way, completely misquoted me. The whole nine yards never bothered to look at my commentary. This is lazy journalism. Yes. They have a stereotype of something they believe you are. By the way, you're threatening to them. Okay, Sean, you're a threat to them. I'm a threat to them. If we weren't threats to them, they wouldn't attack this much. But this is what's going on. And look, I just think the public is savvy enough to know that they can go and seek media elsewhere, which is why Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, cannot oh. wait to get rid of ABC okay. right about now. Hold on, hold on. I, oh, no, no. We're going to talk about Bob Iger in a second <laughs> for a different reason. But this okay. is like, this is Time Magazine. I just want, for people out there who are like, why are Sean and Trish saying this? This is Time Magazine. The suspect arrested in relation to the shooting at Trump's golf course in Florida on Sunday had been identified as Ryan Ralph, a 50-year-old, 58-year-old with unclear political ideology. I... Maybe the Biden Harris sticker on his car <laughs> wasn't a problem. The 19 contributions to Democrats and none to Republicans. Was that, is that unclear, Trish? Because to me, the bumper sticker is pretty clear. The 19 contributions to Democrats are pretty clear. What's the, the spewing hatred of Donald Trump on social media is pretty clear. But Time Magazine cannot bring itself to say, 
you know, he's he's a liberal, he's a Trump hater, because that undermines the narrative. What you can't be bad on the left. So we just have to say it's unclear political ideology. Well, look, I, I think the deep state, so to speak, however you want to define that in the media have been one for so many years. And so this is getting unraveled in real time. The media is feeling it big time, like head on, right? They're, they're feeling it because they're now having to judge themselves based on clicks. It's like they are that restaurant open for business. And if people don't like their food, they're not going to eat it. Now, look, I, I do think that there is a place for journalism where you're going to hear everything, hopefully without the bias, you see it on all sides. But it's entirely possible, Sean, in this day and age that that doesn't quite work because how do you how do you pay for that who sponsors it you don't want the government sponsoring it maybe no, the wait, onus wait, comes on. back to us as individuals right do we like what do i do i read everything right, right? i read all the the idiotic stuff that i can barely you know stand on the left but i i read everything i read and i read everything on the right and i read everything in between and my idea is like that is how i'm an informed journalist and commentator myself because i'm consuming as much as possible and i think you know you, you think about my investing background like that is just what you do right like money is is something that you want to grow regardless of politics and so you need to be able to consume everything understand everything in order to make informed decisions well as citizens i think we have a responsibility in some way shape or form to do that too and maybe it's going and listening to the sean spicer show or the trish regan show where we're pretty responsible and we're making an effort to do that. But I think that this, this, this day of, you know, state controlled journalism, which is what so many on the left would like to go back to, which really is no different, frankly, than RT. It's just USA. Like that's right. what it is. If they're dictating what the narrative is, it's over. It's done. Been there, done that. Sayonara. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.